Good morning. Is it not suitable in Israel to start um, in time? So not, much in time? Not too much, but uh, I'm good if you want to start. Uh, as I said, uh, first of all, I want uh, to welcome you all here in Israel. Sun is shining outside. Um, and um, yeah, I'm glad to see you. I've met uh, all of you in the meantime. Um, I will talk about some technical things. First of all, I would like um, to introduce my colleagues. I will do the Israel. I will do the introduction of the Israeli part. Uh, Thomas will do the introduction of the German part. My colleagues are Beatrice and Bea. She's Bea Gaia and uh, Eva and uh, Ronnie. Ronnie is for the technical stuff. So if you have uh, questions uh, regarding some, any kind of technical uh, problems, you can chat her directly. Uh, Beatrice and uh, Eva and I have uh, prepared uh, this delegation together with Thomas. Uh, we were looking for your Israeli counterparts. Um, we will start by me asking you to keep yourself on mute. If possible, you can keep your um, pictures as long as the connection is well, which is quite stable at the moment, as far as I can see it. Um, anything else? If you want to ask a question, I think you can just ask if I see it's going to get uh, too crowded then I will ask you to ask uh, via the chat and uh, we will take the questions and if we don't answer it right now we will uh, surely answer it uh, later we will try to answer every question um, yeah what else anything else I've forgotten would you remind me of something Thomas no that sounds fine yeah okay so go ahead yeah um, a warm welcome from my side to our Israeli-German business dialogue about lightweighting design, solutions, technology, materials. We have um, the first presentation event today um, in the next two hours and we will have the second part tomorrow. Tomorrow we will hear about composite materials, additive manufacturing, and today about the production and testing technologies for lightweight, uh, for the production of lightweight materials. Um, our project is not only two presentation events, it's even uh, B2B uh, meetings, talks um, in video conferences in the next um, five to 10 days until next week. We have already scheduled a lot of meetings um, between our 12 German comp companies uh, in this sector and Israeli counterparts, business partners, uh, research and development institutes or, um, well, customers. And um, obviously you are free, all the Israeli guys that are here today to fix any further meetings if you have not already done that. Um, uh, today, contacting the, the colleagues from the Israeli-German Chamber of Industry and Commerce, as Shula already mentioned. And we will repeat this fact even later when there are more Israeli guys uh, online, because that's the most important thing. We will hear pitches today, short presentations of six of the companies and some introductions about the, um, from the associations and from the German ministry. But... Actually, we try to, 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 to create a dialogue because this is the most important, most interesting thing. Talk to each other, talk with each other about technology, about solutions and what you can do as business together in this um, uh, constructive business together in these difficult times. We try to facilitate and to foster this exchange. Um, therefore, my invitation, feel free to, to break our schedule. We, we scheduled in a quite German way, very precise every five minutes. If you Israeli guys are curious and we are looking forward to your curiosity, 
just um, be a challenge for the German organization, organized mind and, and uh, ask a lot of questions. We, who we are. Um, I, want, I want to thank um, Shula from the German-Israeli Chamber of uh, Industry and Commerce. That is our partner in the realization of uh, this project. My part is um, from systems, SPS Systems for Business Solutions. We work on behalf of the German government, the, the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy to realize this project where we are in here. And um, I want to thank our 12 companies, the representatives that have been very collaborative and, and uh, very smart in, in preparing all these, uh, uh, these days. Um, thank you very much for being so uh, engaged in, in our project. And I want to thank the, the Israeli guys that are here. And last but not least, our speakers. And that is um, what I just want to introduce to you. And then I give the word to the first speaker. Um, that will be Mr. Loschader from the German government. But we even have um, two representatives from um, the sector associations. From the Israeli side is Mr. Oren Harambam. I hope I pronounced well your name, Oren from the uh, Manufacturers Association of Israel, the executive director. And on the other side, um, from the Woody MA, that is the, the German Mechanical and Plant Engineering Association, Mr. Damaso Lopez from the um, Workforce Hybrid Lightweight Technologies. So we have a short introduction from your side and then maybe even the first uh, dialogue in in the field of, of the engineering sector. And now I'm very happy to have, um, to get a, a, a short overview and introduction from the governmental side from Mr. Werner Loscheider. He is um, uh, the head of the division construction industry, lightweight construction, new materials and resource efficiency in the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. Please, Werner, tell us something about lightweight design in Germany. Yes, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me and I hope you can see my presentation. So, um, uh, my name is Werner Loschalder. I'm the head um, of the Division for Lightweighting, New Materials, Source Efficiency, and Construction within the Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. and. Uh, Yes, a warm welcome from Berlin. It's uh, not too cold. Uh, it's a little bit, yes, it's cloudy. And I guess uh, the weather is much better in Israel. So uh, I'm going to talk about light weighting and our initiative to support light weighting. And on that first slide, you can see uh, some global trends that are influencing uh, light weighting. And of course, the uh, corona crisis, the corona pandemic is an overriding challenge we are facing right now. But there are more global trends we have to face. And so in this context, uh, light weighting is important, is uh, from our point of view, a game changer technology and an enabler, a, a driver of innovation. Uh, and to necessary to um, tackle that uh, trends. So the next slide, I can't go on with that. Can you help me? That doesn't work. Okay, here it is. Uh, at this um, slide, you can see that it's uh, light rating is at the same time a cross cutting technology consisting of different uh, industry, different materials, different manufacturing sectors. And uh, um, that is a challenge bringing um, all the different uh, stakeholders together. And you can see that on the slide, how many different stakeholders are here involved uh, in form of that bionic structure, that honeycomb structure and bringing uh, those stakeholders together and building up that, uh, that net is what we have done in the last years in our, within our ministry. And uh, we have um, 
set up that uh, lightweighting initiative. And here you can see the different elements of that initiative. And that is, that is mostly about uh, networking, uh, the different elements you can see here. And it is secondly about funding um, lightweighting. And I'm going to talk about this red colored elements in the next second. So let's get started with the strategy group. And that body is consisting um, of representatives of the lender lightweighting organizations. And we do have 16 states in Germany. So we have 16 representatives of the lender here in that body. And they bring in a lot of experience and knowledge in the field of lightweighting. And that's very helpful for us, of course. And we have the chance here to link uh, federal and state level, which is important for Germany. On the right side, you find the representatives of industry, union, and association, and they bring in uh, the different materials from uh, steel, aluminium, magnesium, plastic, carbon fibers. And so uh, they enable us uh, to build up a kind of multi-material light rating, and uh, you can see it in form of that uh, broad and complex structure. Yes, it is uh, complex. Uh, it's typical for cross-cutting technology, but what is more important, it is a strong um, base for our political work, and that works run, uh, runs uh, very well. So, the next element of that initiative is the light rating atlas, and this digital tool is uh, used uh, currently by around 700 companies and organizations, mainly from Germany, more and more are coming from uh, European member states, and some are uh, even from abroad. And so it, it might be as well interesting for you, because it is available in, in English, and you have the, the chance here um, to represent your light rating skills, and to find new business partners and new business partners could find you. So it might be interesting and it would be great if you would get part of that net. The next element is the light rating strategy from the economy for the economy is a, the title. And um, in that uh, process, we have involved 350 experts from business and research in three very successful workshops and one final conference. And here we have got a lot of information, um, actually about 600 ideas, incentives, which you can find here, and very uh, and 42 very specific actions. And it is put together in a paper of key issues that, find you, that you find here at the right side. And that paper of business and research uh, is and was the base for our work within the ministry. And we have uh, written our strategy and we will publish that strategy by the end of the year, hopefully. And uh, let me add this from, uh, from our point of view, that process, that bottom-up process is very successful because um, we have um, uh, given business and research, research the opportunity to bring in themselves. And um, so they have the unique opportunity to shape the light rating framework. And we, on the other side, we have the, the chance to get the required um, expertise in that field that we do need. So, um, a milestone is the next element of the initiative, the technology transfer program for light rating. A milestone because for the first time in Germany, we have set up a funding program only made for light rating and with a very strong financial base. And I don't want to read all the five uh, goals of that initiative. The most important one is uh, the typical one for a transfer program. Uh, it is to support the cross uh, industry and cross material knowledge and technology transfer. So that's the most important goal of that funding program. And how do we achieve our goals? So therefore, we have set up five funding lines, which you can find uh, at this, uh, this slide. 
And um, what is good to know about that um, uh, program and about the funding is that the money comes from out of two different sources. The first uh, financial source is the budget of our uh, ministry and um, that money um, goes into the funding line one, uh, which is about technology development. But the lion's share of the money comes from the second source and this is um, the climate fund of the government and that money goes in funding lines two and three, which are about CO2 savings and resource efficiency. And here one can see how important climate protection is generally and how important climate protection is for light rating and especially for that funding program. So to sum it up a little bit, um, that is a very successful program from our point of view. There's a huge demand to get funded by that program. And so we are very ha happy that we have uh, got started that program um, in April this year. Um, finally, um, we have to um, enlarge our net, of course, um, on an European, on an international level, because at the end of the day, light rating is a global challenge. And so we, we need an international uh, networking. And I've brought with me two uh, events that might be interesting for you. The first one is here uh, that we have had last uh, two weeks ago, uh, the first meeting of the European light rating network. Uh, it was organized and initiated by our ministry under the U German EU Council presidency. And the idea was bringing together uh, business research, European Commission and the different ministry from the European member states uh, to set up an European uh, light rating net. The next uh, event is a uh, very important one. Um, it is the second light rating summit. It will be on the 13th of April 2021 at the Hannover Fair. And that is a political highlight with um, um, our minister, Peter Altmaier, as one of the keynote speakers. We will have there more ministers, state secretaries, and high level speakers from business and research. So that is an, an event that you shouldn't miss. And of course, on the international level, the already introduced foreign market entry program is key for us. So we have organized a lot of uh, uh, meetings, uh, not only with Israel like today and tomorrow we have, uh, we had already meetings uh, with US and with China and we will have more um, meetings next year with Netherlands, Japan and Nigeria. So uh, that's uh, key for us as well. So let me sum it up. Light rating is from our point of view, a game changer te technology that is key for modernizing and strengthening our industrial sector on a sustainable way. And to illustrate that, let me use a light rating principle that stands for less weight, less energy, lower emissions and greater functionalities and even better resource efficiency. Of course, there are um, on the other side some challenges and we have to face them. And the first one I want to mention is that we have to establish fully digitized and connected value chains. And we do need the required uh, light bidding expertise and knowledge on every level of that chain. So the second one is reducing costs, reducing costs, reducing costs especially in, in the automotive sector, but in many other sectors as well. And the uh, third one is uh, creating suitability for mass, mass production. And last but not least, we have to establish sophisticated recycling processes, especially regarding multi-material lightweight. And we, we do need that because uh, we have to guarantee um, the acceptance of society and politics. And if we do so, and I'm sure we can and we will do so, then light rating is a win-win-win technology for jobs, climate and companies. So that's it from my side. 
Um, if you have more questions concerning the, the technology transfer program light rating or concerning the light rating initiative, here you can find the, the two contacts to get in contact with my colleagues and they will be happy to give you the required information. And so again, that's it from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for having me and I would be glad to answer your questions or to hear your remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Werner, uh, for this uh, very impressive introduction on how the lightweighting topic is already organized and deeply in the structure of uh, research, production, institutions in Germany. Um, it shows us that it is a very important future technology and, um, well, are there any questions from our uh, audience already for Mr. Loschade for Werner? If if not, I think we can uh, we can go ahead with uh, with our round table that is uh, actually uh, with one of the representatives of the institutions that you have already shown in your presentation, Werner. Another one will be the the chair of our pitching session of the German company, that is Tiag van Reden from Composites United. But now in our panel, we have um, two representatives. One is uh, Oren Harambam and the other one is Damaso Lopez from the WDMA. I am curious about uh, hearing what what uh, is your perspective on lightweight from your specific sector that is more the engineering um, side in Germany, but even more in Israel. So let's start with um, with uh, Damaso and then um, after that, uh, the short introduction from Oren. And then there will be time for, for questions on this uh, aspect. Damaso, please. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you for having me today here. I uh, would like to uh, start with a very uh, brief introduction of our working group and, and then we can continue uh, regarding the uh, questions and then discussing uh, the topics. So now you should be able to see my presentation. Yeah, perfect. Yes, great. So our working group was founded in 2016. Our members are mainly VDMA members, companies who are providing uh, technology for lightweight or multi-material designs but also users and supplier of uh, industries as also a research institute are all our members in our working group. We are um, members of the trade association Composites Germany. And we have a, a closer collaboration with uh, industry research institutes and also with ministries as uh, Mr. Loscheider just said, uh, mentioned before, the technology transfer programs, we do uh, some uh, workshops to find uh, new ideas in how we can collaborate and how can we, we can um, design a new projects and also how can bring our um, companies in, in, in this kind of projects together. Once you are a VDMA member, you are able to uh, work in, in different uh, working group without extra uh, cost. For instance, you can uh, go for uh, my working group, uh, lightweight technology, but also work for uh, additive manufacturing or wind industry. And uh, you can also work for different trade associations like uh, waste and recycling, but also uh, robotic automotion and software, software uh, digitalization, 
but also uh, do some research engineering in the industrial research. But um, after uh, this, uh, you can also work with our uh, foreign offices, for instance, in China and Japan and in Brazil. And these are um, main topics that we do when we work together in our working group. We not only work on these topics, what we are focused on, but also in different areas. And this is a, a cross um, selling point uh, for us because uh, you get a lot of information from also from other topics that they are now mainly on your field, but also very interesting for all the companies. Here you can see a small abstract from our um, companies. For instance, today we are in, uh, in the meeting. They will be um, they will show some um, slides uh, regarding the company LTE. Also, uh, Karl Mayer will show all his um, expectations and also uh, some. I saw it already, and Tesh Techno, but also um, companies that are not in this uh, slide, like uh, AFTP. And tomorrow we'll have other companies like Bufa or Lightness Institute for Polymers, etc., who will um, bring to uh, Israel uh, expert lightweight know how and also uh, the high technology made in Germany um, with, with them. So if you uh, need some information about our working group or different other topics, just please uh, not be afraid to contact me. So it's, um, now, it's, Thomas, how will we, should we continue? Should we, we thank you, uh, Damaso. First of all, um, I think it's better to hear Oren first, and then we mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have some questions. I guess we have some questions. Shula, you should unmute yourself. Why? You know that I'm always shouting, so I said I'll <laughs> put the volume down a little bit. <laughs> I want to introduce Oren Arambam. He's uh, from the Israeli Manufacturers Association. We are working together for a lot of years already. Um, I know him from Industry 4.0 He and from Energy Efficiency. He was with us in Germany. He knows the VDMA. And mm -hmm. uh, I know that he admires uh, the way of uh, Germany organizing itself. We are much too small to be organized in such a way with so many associations. And so, um, therefore, it's a little smaller, but it's Israel, don't forget it. Uh, Oren, please take over. Um, Shula, do you see our uh, logo? Of course. Yes. Do you see the presentation? Yep. Yes, of course. Okay, uh, because I have a little uh, problem over here in my uh, computer. I hope that uh, you all can see uh, the presentation. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you very much uh, for hosting me in your meeting. Uh, thank you, Shula, uh, from the Israel-Germany Chamber of Commerce, uh, that asked me to make a short introduction about uh, the Manufacturing Association of Israel, about the Israeli industry, and of course, to try to focus a little bit about uh, composite materials and uh, lightweight uh, materials, um, as much as uh, it can be relevant to the Israeli industry and the Israeli market. A few words about the Manufacturing Association of Israel. Uh, this is the largest economic organization it represents uh, almost all the industrial uh, output, the industrial companies in Israel. It's quite different from Germany. I know that in Germany, every sector in the industry has itself a uh, uh, representative uh, organization. My organization represents all the industrial uh, companies from all the branches, traditional uh, industry, industries, high tech, uh, small, medium, big companies, almost all of the industry. 
few words about uh, a few uh, numbers about uh, the Israeli industry. We are talking about uh, almost uh, 13,000 industrial uh, companies. We are talking about uh, uh, 300, more than 350,000 employees in uh, these companies. Of course, that uh, these figures uh, are relevant from the pre-corona era. And uh, like every other country in the world, also in Israel, uh, the corona has a significant uh, influence uh, on the economy. Uh, although the industrial sector, I must mention, um, was uh, uh, quiet, uh, uh, could work, um, although um, all the restrictions, although the lockdown, uh, most of the industrial sector uh, could work uh, um, almost uh, as uh, regular times. Um, the industrial uh, sector in Israel is very export biased. Uh, more than 40% of the total output is uh, uh, for export. As you can see, um, the export markets of the industrial uh, sector in Israel are divided, um, let's say a third of the export uh, is uh, for uh, the European Union. Um, another third is for the Americas, North and Latin America. And uh, uh, the, rest, uh, the, the rest third is uh, the rest of the world. As you can see, uh, the most dominant uh, export uh, sectors in the Israeli industry are the machinery and the electrical equipment, uh, chemical uh, products, uh, plastic and, and rubber is about uh, 6% uh, of the total export. Um, in my uh, role in the Manufacturer Association, I'm, I'm the head of the building materials and uh, the consumer goods uh, and uh, I'm responsible of many uh, for many uh, traditional branches in the uh, Israeli industry such as uh, building materials such as uh, uh, plastics and uh, and rubber cosmetics uh, furniture packaging uh, paper uh, and uh, uh, many other traditional uh, uh, branches some of them like plastics and rubber, we can see here uh, as the share of the total uh, industrial sec uh, export. Some more uh, interesting uh, uh, figures, uh, the growth rate in Israel is uh, higher than the average in the OECD and the EU, as you can see uh, in the past uh, five years, again, we are talking about, of course, uh, before the COVID-19, in the past five years, uh, the uh, average uh, growth rate in Israel was 3.3% uh, 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 per year, um, higher, as I mentioned before, than the OECD and the EU. Um, startup nation. I, ho I believe that you all heard uh, more than once uh, this phrase uh, defining Israel as a center of R&D, center of uh, innovation uh, for startups, for R&D uh, centers for the multinational, many multinational uh, companies, as you can see uh, some of them here uh, from the software uh, industries, from the hardware industries, uh, electronics, etc. And uh, I think that uh, one of the uh, most uh, important reasons for this uh, ecosystem is the fact that uh, the R&D expenditure from the GDP, uh, uh, when you examine it in international comparison, you can find Israel ranked number one, higher than uh, Korea, even uh, Germany, uh, United States, Singapore, and many uh, important countries. Israel is ranked number one in this uh, definition. And uh, this is, of course, one of the reasons that uh, can build the, uh, the ecosystem of innovation here in Israel. 
Um, this is some words about uh, the background, about the industry uh, in Israel. Um, and now if you, uh, uh, if you are asking me uh, to speak a little bit about uh, composite materials and uh, uh, lightweight uh, uh, materials, I must mention that uh, these two sectors are not very big in the Israeli industry. Um, composite materials uh, are connected here in Israel, especially to the aviation industry, especially to the security uh, industry, um, and many products that uh, um, aimed uh, to, the, to the army, uh, to the Israeli army or uh, to export. Um, it is a very professional uh, sector, but not very wide in Israel. Um, and if I can say this about the composite materials, uh, I can say it much uh, more, uh, 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 much stronger about the lightweight uh, uh, materials uh, uh, sector. It is uh, not uh, quite, in, in, in not very developed uh, in Israel. We can find many, uh, maybe startups, maybe initiatives, Maybe we can find it uh, in uh, uh, R&D uh, centers, R&D institutes, in the academy. There are some ideas for R&D in this, in this sector. Of course, there are some companies that uh, uh, use this uh, technology, but still it is not very wide in the Israeli industry. But if I uh, uh, make a look in the... Um, coming years, I can find uh, two uh, important uh, decisions that uh, make a big potential for these uh, two sectors, for the sector of the composite materials and the sector of uh, lightweight uh, materials. And I connect it uh, to the uh, construction and building uh, sector in Israel. The first decision was uh, about uh, four years ago. It was about uh, uh, taking uh, the Israeli market into industrialized uh, construction. Uh, the, the productivity of the construction sector is Isra in Israel is uh, quite low uh, when you compare it to the productivity of other sectors, such as uh, commerce, such as industry. And when you compare it also to the uh, co productivity of the construction sector in uh, other countries, and uh, this was the background for a very important decision uh, that the government, the government made uh, to push the construction sector into a much more industrialized, in, industrialized uh, construction. Um, it includes uh, uh, government incentives. It, it, it includes uh, uh, trainings of employees. It includes... Uh, um, uh, benefits uh, to uh, a building uh, with uh, industrialized uh, methods. And I think that this decision uh, really um, uh, can also give a push to the uh, sector of the lightweight uh, materials that aimed for building and maybe even to composite materials. Uh, the other uh, very important decision uh, was made about a half a year ago. Uh, uh, it uh, made uh, uh, a mandatory in Israel uh, to build uh, uh, to, to build uh, buildings, uh, residential buildings, and buildings for offices and uh, 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 other uh, uh, business sector uh, buildings. Uh, by the standard of green building. Uh, it was not manda mandatory until now, but uh, from the year of, uh, from next year and uh, the years uh, that afterwards, uh, it will be uh, mandatory. And I'm sure that uh, one of the uh, elements uh, that can uh, promote or can be the basis of a, a green building uh, to achieve uh, sustainability, to achieve uh, um, energy saving, 
uh, can be the use of uh, lightweight materials, uh, and again, maybe uh, even uh, composite materials in uh, um, in some uh, uh, products on, or in some uh, methods. I, I think that uh, these two uh, trends, these two, uh, I, I would say, uh, even two uh, regulations about the industrialized uh, uh, construction and about the green building construction uh, can find or can uh, promote potential here in Israel uh, for cooperation with, with you, uh, the German uh, uh, companies. And uh, if I add uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this ecosystem, uh, also uh, uh, two uh, R&D uh, institutes, uh, the Metal Institute and the uh, Polymer Institute, uh, and uh, Shula, if I'm not wrong, uh, Dr. Naum Nave from the uh, Plastic Center, the uh, Center of R&D of Polymers and Plastics, uh, will speak uh, uh, later. I, I'm not sure if it's uh, today or uh, another day. But if we add these uh, two R&D institutes uh, to, the, to your group and to the potential in Israel, um, I guess that we can all together think about uh, cooperation, think about uh, uh, promoting uh, some initiatives, uh, um, use this, uh, this, uh, this uh, sectors, the lightweight uh, materials and the, compos and the composite materials uh, uh, in order to uh, bring it uh, to the market as products that can be used, uh, especially in the uh, construction sector in here in Israel and maybe in, uh, even in other sectors. Thank you, Oren. Exactly, we are in uh, touch with the Israel Metals Institute and we are also in touch with the uh, Israel Rubber and Plastic Institute. Um, we will hear the Israel Plastic and Rubber Institute uh, tomorrow, and um, I think it would be it will be a really good idea. I'll gladly connect uh, everyone who is interested in uh, R and D to them. Uh, I would like to point out here that in the chat you will find. Um, Right in the beginning, if you scroll up, uh, you will find the, our service brochure. That means the brochure of the whole delegation, where you can uh, see the German, the German companies and the German participants. Uh, and in order to get in touch with them, you can uh, download the brochure. It is uh, also on our website and you can download it from there. Um, we will also have a link on our LinkedIn. And um, yeah, Oren, it's interesting what you it's mm. interesting what you say in regard with the building sector because uh, Werner Loschat from the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs and uh, Energy, he also comes from the building sector, and the building sector is one of the sectors that goes together with the light weighting and the composite sector. Is that right? Yes, for, for my point of view, it is right. So uh, there is a huge potential economically and ecologically. So uh, it is um, it is a big chance to get involved uh, in that sector, bringing construction and light rating together. That's that's a real op opportunity for for many uh, players in uh, in our community in, uh, in industry so we should work on that and it, it's uh, necessary and good because it's good for climate protection for source efficiency yes and for jobs and uh, yeah so that's that's very interesting uh, place um, i have a question to oren yes sir this is possible now. hi oren but um, just if, if you can uh, introduce yourself well, Damaso Lopez VDMA, I just show my ah, work. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Yes, no worries. Um, okay, you say that uh, regarding construction, you spoke uh, before regarding aviation and uh, also defense. Um, one thing is um, what role does recycling play in lightweight uh, design in Israel? Is there any um, 
collaboration or any some numbers that you need to uh, fit uh, regarding the green buildings or the new wheels. I'm not sure that I understand the question you asked me about the collaboration between lightweight and between what? Recycling material, for instance, you are uh, uh, some comments. How, how, how many percentage are um, being in, in uh, recycling material, for instance? or are all uh, raw materials? Um, well, I must mention that uh, unfortunately, I cannot be uh, very proud uh, to, uh, to speak about figures of uh, recycled materials in the plastic sector or in the building sector. When I compare it uh, for, uh, to what is happening uh, in Germany or in other advanced economies that Israel is uh, uh, looking to be like. Uh, uh, the figures in Israel are lower than uh, the figures that uh, you know in the, in the, in the EU, uh, for example. But uh, as I mentioned before, there are some uh, uh, regulations, decisions, uh, trends uh, that take the, uh, not only the industry, but uh, the market, the total market, the total population uh, into uh, uh, more awareness uh, to uh, recycling. And uh, uh, this trend regulation uh, is uh, also as of course uh, influence about uh, the industry and about uh, producing, using, developing uh, uh, products with uh, uh, recycled materials. Uh, I can say, for example, uh, uh, but just in, in brackets, I will say that I'm not sure that it has connection here in Israel to lightweight materials. As I mentioned before, the lightweight materials uh, in Israel is uh, uh, still not very developed and not very wide sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I uh, look again, at, uh, for example, uh, take the packaging sector, um, I think that almost all the packaging uh, uh, manufacturers in Israel understand and see what is happening in uh, the multinational companies such as Nestle, Unilever, that uh, set the year 2025 uh, as the year that uh, all their packages should be uh, sustainable by sustainable standards. And all these companies in Israel, the manufacturers of, the manufacturers of uh, packaging uh, are uh, uh, making their, themselves uh, uh, ready with R&D, with machines, with uh, uh, checking where they can find a recycled materials in or in uh, in way to be uh, ready to be suppliers of the uh, multinational to be uh, the multinational companies to be uh, relevant players uh, uh, in the field uh, when uh, we reach uh, to the year 2025 when uh, uh, the, the standard and the regulations of mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, recycled uh, plastics, recycled uh, packaging uh, be, be uh, effective. Uh, again, if you asking if you are asking specifically about uh, lightweight and the connection between it and between the recycled materials, I, uh, I, I can I cannot tell you uh, uh, very much details because this uh, sector is uh, not, uh, still not developed, but as I mentioned before, I believe that there is a potential. There is a potential because of the regulation, because of the awareness. Um, and if you take this potential and you add it to the uh, startup ecosystem, to the innovation ecosystem, to the uh, academy, to the uh, R&D institutes, as Shula mentioned before, uh, I guess that there is to the uh, innovation authority uh, uh, that uh, in Israel is a very important player in the uh, innovation ecosystem by giving uh, government in, governmental incentives uh, for R&D. I believe that there is a, a very um, 
big potential to promote uh, this sector in Israel. Oren, there are two more questions. Gunnar has a question to you. Gunnar yeah. from uh, Plasticon Composites and um, also uh, Bena would like to ask a question. So Gunnar, go ahead first. You were the first. Yes. Uh, hello, it's Gunnar from Plasticon Composites. Hello, sir. We are, we are producing equipment and piping, uh, non-metallic stuff for the industry, like chemical plants and, and minings and, and all these things. Um, you spoke about an underdeveloped sector, which is, let's say, on a laboratory level. But when I see companies in your uh, area, um, like Fiber Technique, which are producing uh, vessels and equipments for... Um, now, for chip industry and all this stuff, is it really, let's say, underdeveloped? I'm saying, I'm saying again, um, I, I believe that you are talking about composite materials. Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, there are uh, some companies with uh, very high qualities and uh, very high capabilities and uh, innovation in R&D especially in the aviation sector, especially in the, uh, the security, the defense sector, um, there is a very uh, high profession, professional uh, knowledge in these companies. Um, they, are all, they are also uh, export biased. I didn't say that, uh, if, if you, sorry, if you understand from my words that uh, this sector is underdeveloped or... It sounds uh, like, yeah. Uh, uh, no. Uh, so please let me correct myself. It is not very wide in Israel. Okay. Yeah, it's not very wide like the plastic sector or like the metal sector. Uh, the, it is, uh, uh, in ex of course, the, it is an existing sector. There is a lot of potential, I believe, as I mentioned before. Um, um, Again, I, I'm sorry that uh, if you understand that uh, uh, it is underdeveloped. Uh, uh, no, it is not underdeveloped when when you ch when you're checking the capabilities, when you're checking the of course the 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 qualities of the products, the knowledge. But I'm talking about the the, the size of the sector from the total Israeli industry. Um, Okay. Again, the, the, the potential, of course, uh, exists, and uh, and and the companies that uh, that deal with these uh, materials, of course, are in uh, very high uh, um, acting by uh, very high standards, uh, the aviation standards, um, for example. Okay. Thanks. Bina uh, from Georg Zam. It's a winding technology. You also had a question, Pina? Oren? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, um, Sun Company is supplier of machinery for the composite field and carbon. I can hardly metal. hear you. Sorry, I can hardly hear you. Can you hear me now? You are very not very loud. Very low, yeah, very low. Something is wrong with my microphone, I guess. I will try to. I will try to hear. Uh, yeah, now, is it better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, uh, some company is uh, manufacturing machinery used in the production of carbon fiber and other technical fibers and composites. So, my question would be: Is there any uh, government funding or support to smaller investors um, for when they go for um, uh, investment in carbon fiber or in composite production? Yeah, or yeah, indeed, in indeed, uh, indeed. A very good question, uh, really a very good question. Uh, um, during the, the last couple of years, uh, the Israeli government, uh, by the encouragement, of course, uh, of my uh, and the initiative of my organization, uh, conducted some uh, incentive programs in order to take the Israeli industry uh, to uh, higher uh, productivity and to Industry 4.0. Uh, one of these programs uh, called um, um, Advanced Manufacturing Program is aimed 
to uh, give uh, 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 governmental grants to industrial companies that uh, implement advanced materials. And uh, I, I guess that uh, the, the title advanced materials uh, concludes the, of course, the composite materials. And it, it is a very good question because, of course, it can be a, a marketing tool for you uh, to connect with to relevant Israeli companies and uh, maybe with the help of uh, Shula, maybe with the help of us as an organization that uh, want to promote our uh, members, uh, we can um, introduce uh, 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 you and your colleagues uh, the, the machinery solutions that you can give them and to explain uh, our members that uh, uh, this kind of investments uh, 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 can be can get uh, governmental incentives uh, uh, by the uh, defi definition of uh, advanced materials it can reach up to uh, 30 percent of the investment in the machinery. Um, Shula, I can uh, deliver you the uh, details of the program. Uh, in fact, there are two programs. Uh, one of them is more relevant, I believe, uh, to the field of, the, of advanced materials. And really, it is a very good idea to use this program as a um, as a pusher uh, in order to uh, make win-win situation for you as the suppliers of the machinery and of course for our members uh, as uh, uh, companies that uh, implement new, new te technologies that uh, will uh, promote their uh, capabilities. Okay, I will, I will uh, get the information from you and uh, I will provide it to Bena. I think we should go on. We're a little uh, back in time, a very little bit. And uh, I think the companies are excited to, to give their presentations also. Um, I would like to thank you for this discussion. You can, I will gladly connect you to Oren. I will gladly connect you to Damaso also. Whoever, um, just contact me, okay? Please. Thomas? Will you take it over? Yeah, Give thank, it over to <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Shula. Thank you, Oren and Damaso and Svana in the beginning. Um, there is a comment in, from Yehiel Shaham that uh, talks about uh, the awareness of composites and uh, composite materials and, and the advantages. I think um, the company pitches we will hear now will will definitely talk about the advantages and the the need of, of awareness and uh, the 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 improvements you can gain from this technology so i will pass the word to our chair now that is tiag von reden he is the cluster manager of the leading edge cluster my carbon in the um, Another association in Germany, we already heard about it, Carbon Composites United. Tiag will um, do the short introduction to the companies and then we hear um, even our first six companies. Thank you. And yes. Tiag, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Um, yeah, welcome to everybody. Um, I'm glad to moderate now the, the next session. Um, <clears throat> As Thomas already said, I am the uh, manager of My Carbon and uh, deputy director of the Composite United. Um, maybe a really short overview about the Composite United. The Composite United is um, a network in the center of, of Germany or Europe. Um, we are located in Germany mainly, but we also have um, yeah, clusters or networks in, in Belgium, Austria and Switzerland. And um, the main focus are um, yeah, fiber reinforced um, high performance materials. That means um, fiber reinforced plastics, but also ceramics and concrete. And um, we also already have this discussion today if uh, the construction is important and we see a 
big grow in this field. Um, most of our new partners are companies who came out of the field of construction and they want to use the combination of concrete and carbon fibers for uh, yeah, new, a new way of, of construct um, buildings or things like this. So I also think that this is really a, an important field and we will see a, a big growth in the next years. But um, the, um, still the main topic of our network are um, reinforced plastics and the topics of light rating. And um, I would say my carbon is yeah, one cluster of this um, association and we are located mainly in Bavaria. But um, the most important thing is that we are responsible for, for all the R&D topics of the whole association. And um, I also want to point out here something to the discussion just before about the R&D fundings. Um, Mainly in the past, but I, I still it's uh, um, um, I think it's still the same. We have a strong cooperation between the EU and um, Israel. So um, there normally um, Israel companies could, could be part of um, EU funded R and D projects. And um, so if you want to start a cooperation and uh, you want to start with an R and D project uh, developing new things, then um, look for this funding. Um, it should be quite easy to set up such a, a project and both parties should be funded by, uh, yeah, by the EU or the German government and by the Israeli government. Um, so, but I don't want to, to talk too long about um, my carbon um, and the Composite United because I think um, more important are the companies. And um, yeah, I, I glad to introduce these uh, companies who will present themselves. And I'm quite sure, yeah, you will find a lot, or I will see now a lot of really good German companies. And um, just mention one thing, if you find not the right partner for your cooperation, then feel free to contact me. Um, we have 400 members and I'm quite sure that will be one of our members is the right partner. Um, but um, I think also with these companies you see today, we have a great, you have a great opportunity to, to cooperate. So we will start with uh, AFPT. Um, AFPT is a small company, but one of the pioneers in the field of tape laying. And um, yeah, Anna Bittner will present this uh, company and yeah, feel free to start, Anna. Okay, thank you, Jack, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Jack just mentioned, my name is Arne. I'm from AFPT. Um, and as we just heard this morning from Werner Lohscheider, that is one of the main goals uh, for a broader uh, uh, usage of, of lightweight technology is to re reduce cost, reduce cost, reduce cost. And that is exactly the challenge uh, AFPT is facing. Um, so I will start with my presentation and I hope that you will see that in full screen mode right now. Indeed. Okay, perfect. Um, so who's AFPT, what are we doing? AFPT is an equipment supplier for laser assisted tape placement and uh, winding. Um, and we mainly based on, on thermoplastic composites. So we offer machinery to produce uh, composite components in a fully automated way. Beside of that, we have also uh, an application center here in, in Germany, close to Koblenz, approximately one hour drive from Frankfurt Airport, where we develop composite components where we are using our own technology to produce, uh, yeah, let's say, smaller scale uh, uh, series uh, for our customers, so uh, everybody is allowed or invited to, to to join our technology to come to our application center and and try uh, the the production method and the materials for its own product. So we don't don't have to buy a machine before you can realize the first products. We have a have a huge capacity to develop uh, your ideas here at our site. So what's the idea of the process? As I just said, it's all uh, based on thermoplastic composites. So we use a thermoplastic pre prick tape, so a pre impregnated tape material, uh, such as the one you see here on the screen. Um, the, these tapes consist of a thermoplastic matrix, which could be PP, polyethylene, uh, but also temperature resistance, uh, um, thermoplastic materials like PEEP or PEC or PPS. Uh, and of course, these tapes are continuously 
um, reinforced with carbon or glass fiber. We can use both with our machine. We don't do this tape if that's one of because that's uh, uh, often often uh, frequently asked question. Uh, we just buy these tapes uh, from the market. There are several suppliers on the market. One very good, uh, a very good one is here also in the consortium uh, Mitsui Chemicals. They also offer these kind of materials. Um, how does the process work? Uh, what we are doing with our tooling, with our technology, is we melt these thermoplastic tapes with laser and directly consolidate these materials or weld them together by applying pressure with, with our heads. So it's a so-called in situ consolidation process, which means the consolidation of the laminate directly happens within the machine, which at the end means you don't need any post-processing. You don't need to put them in an autoclave or in an oven or whatever. The product you are making like a tube or a plate comes finished out of the machine, which is the main main benefit of this technology and which is also uh, the reason why you save a lot of costs because you don't have any post process and on the other side is a completely automated production method so you don't have any or don't have really uh, labor intense work for making your laminate which is completely different to thermoset uh, technologies. The, the heart of our uh, of our heads is is the the software because we are not just heating the tape material with a given amount of uh, laser power. We measure the, the temperature in the consolidation area of the molten material and control the laser power based on this measurement. So it's a closed loop control uh, um, yeah, system. Um, we have also several other parameters like the, the compression pressure, like the tape tension and some other like laser power we control and also record during the process. That means at the end, because we don't have any post processes, you can conclude from your recorded data directly to the product quality, which is a huge, uh, huge, huge benefit for the composite production because that's different to thermoset manufacturing where you have always a post process like the curing and you cannot directly uh, conclude from the data during the manufacturing to the uh, product quality. So we have a kind of a online quality control within the machine. So what's the main applications for, for this technology? We are very wide uh, and have a broad range of application in, 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 in tubes. So tubes, circular tubes, for example, the oil and gas industry, for, for pipelines, for deep sea rises, they are used, but also for structural ele elements in electrical motors or in, in, in automotive structures. You can also use the technology to do pressure vessels. That is what you see right here. Uh, we've already made uh, hydrogen pressure vessels with burst pressures more than 1,600 bars. You can use this for CNG, uh, natural gas. You can use it for compressed air with, with let's say, also uh, cheaper materials like uh, polypropylene glass fiber. There's a huge range also for the for the pressure vessels applications. And the dimension you can do is also very wide. We've made machines that can handle diameters of the two, two meters and six meter long. And the, the technology is pretty easy to upscale. Um, we also do, let's say, the inserts for the uh, injection molding due to the fact that we are using a thermoplastic material. You can over mold these things. Uh, and there, in, in this way, you can create 3D uh, uh, complex structures with local reinforcements with unidirectional fiber uh, inside. So these kind of rings or, or ovals and, and square parts you can use for the, for the injection molding. What is the main applications we see our technology? This infrastructure oil, gas, uh, oil and gas uh, sector is pretty common. We are we have uh, or we implemented our technology there at several customers, people using uh, our technology to do pipelines, deep sea rises in a continuous way. But also, of course, you can use it to, to, to make uh, water pipes and also couplings for the water pipes if you need to, to have a little bit more uh, burst pressure and more strength in these components. We also uh, we have also implemented our technology in the power tools and pump sector. There are these uh, small small um, tubes are used in the cans within pumps or, or electrical motors to deviate the stator from the rotor. Uh, that is also a big big application because you have excellent burst pressure values, but also uh, excellent electrical uh, uh, magnetic application. Uh, um, yeah, specification of the components, which is differs from, from metals. And of course, one of the most 
development or biggest development sectors is the automotive and the uh, aviation. We are not not there with the technology. There's not real application, but let's say 80% of our development we do here at our technical center is automotive or aviation related. So that's also a big, big future market for us. Um, yeah, so that was a very brief introduction to a company and technology. I guess there will be questions. I would be happy to answer them and please feel free to contact me um, and then we can discuss your application and ideas more detailed I'm available for that. Thank you. Tiak, I think your microphone is muted. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Um, yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, so we're a bit out of time. So maybe one question, if that's really important. Otherwise, we can um, have later some more questions. Just unmute. I think Oleg. Yeah, Oleg. Just unmute your microphone and. Yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Hi, thank you very much. Small question. Uh, some of the players in the AFPT field now started to work in on the development of 3D printing technologies, mm -hmm. which are, I would say, based on the AFPT technology. Where, mm -hmm. where are uh, your companies standing in this case? Yeah, yeah, we also uh, concentrating on this factor because it's very interesting to combine these 3D printing and then just local reinforcing with some tapes where you need additional strength and stiffness. That's very interesting. We also have several partners we are doing that together uh, in the us but also uh, in europe also in israel um we also honestly speaking developed our first own 3d printer um but we see that this is really a key factor that you that you have to develop with and concentrate on and you cannot do that uh, uh by side of the of the tape placement, so uh, we we have our partners there. We are also um, concentrating on this topic. It's a very interesting future topic, but we don't develop our own printers anymore. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, um, yeah, thanks. So then we will come to the um, next presentation. Um, we do not go along the value chain, so. Um, Arno already mentioned that they need uh, materials and we will see um, one man material manufacturer to tomorrow. But between the production of the material and then the usage in, in the FPT machine, we also need a winding process. And um, there, SAM is, is the right company. And um, yeah, I think, Benna, will you present SAM? Um, I'm Mona and uh, Benna, we make a team for this okay. event. And Perfect. So, feel free. Uh, we will start. <clears throat> we will present our company. Uh, Sam, Georg Sam is a traditional German company with his roots in the textile industry. But during the last 30 years, we produce uh, winding machines and solutions for only technical yarns. We probably look back to 74 years know-how in developing and constructing machines to offer high quality of spool materials. And therefore we have exclusively production in Germany, development and design in our headquarters. We are technology leader in winding solution for different materials and different application. Our development and production is at our headquarters in, in Germany in Eschwege but we have uh, several partners in developing uh, new materials as uh, technology center and universities, and we work uh, together. Worldwide right now subsidiaries in Asia and Afri America, agencies in several countries can support our customer. We have grouped our winders according to the material and uh, the applied technology in fine fields. For today's event, I want to present you the high performance fiber field where the, our customer are leader in production of Aramind and Dynema. But we are the first and the 90% of uh, the producers and processor of carbon fibers are our customer. 
we have the winder for the prepreg, dip toe, and slit toe for thermoset on thermoplastic processes. Also in converting field, we keep worldwide the banknote sector for the security tapes, but the slit tape for carbon fiber are our customers too. 30% of our production goes to the tape. Our coating line for the glass fiber and high performance fiber is asked for application in light lighting and in composite field. There are big components used in several applications of light lighting. But some is not only for uh, winders, uh, systems are our uh, strongest system for high productivity and transparency, built up with uh, several and already uh, named partners. Our, our handling systems are spooled and applied for ergonomically doffing process to increase productivity in the automatic production lines. Our automatic winders and the handling system are integrated in the industry 4.02. At last, some example for slitting and winding for several material for the packaging industry, for alum aluminum tape, for uh, mica tape for isolation. Our solution, 20,000, uh, several solutions for 70 branches. We are proud to help you for your solution too. Thank you for the uh, following the presentation. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. Um, again, maybe um, one question if there's some. Shula, did you raise your hand or need your, your um, so um, I just look in the um, chat. There's also no question. You always can um, um, write your questions also in the chat and then I read them. Maybe I, um, I have a question. Um, do you also produce um, fibers or you concentrate on the, on the winding technology? No, we do not uh, produce any fibers. We are winding the fibers for a perfect uh, precision spool. Yeah, okay, perfect. So then um, I will go on with the um, next presentation. Thanks uh, again for, for this presentation. Um, the next company will be Karl Meyer, also a, a textile company. And um, yeah, the presentation will be done by um, uh, um, Turgay, I expect. Yes, correct. Yeah, perfect. I just will share the presentation. So, hope you can hear me and, and uh, see the presentation. Yeah, we, we can hear you and see what. No, we see the, the wrong um, monitor. Okay. okay. You see, we have two guys today. Uh, my colleague, uh, Jurgen Trell, she is a VP uh, for new technologies at Karma, and my name. Um, sorry, can, can you change the, the monitor? Now we see the, um, the viewer for the presenter. Okay. And now? Yeah, now it's perfect. Okay, good. Great. So, as I mentioned, Turgay Turan, uh, responsible for business development at uh, Karl Mayer. Uh, at first, uh, thanks to the organizer and, uh, and it seems uh, uh, who gave us the opportunity to present today, Karl Meyer. Karl Meyer uh, has an innovative uh, market leader for technical textiles. So, who is Karl Meyer? Karl Meyer established in 1937 
and uh, with more than 3,300 employees worldwide, and uh, basically located in Germany and uh, also located in different countries uh, all over the world, and with uh, agencies in more than 19 countries. Here are some key figures about Karl Meyer, which you can read too. And uh, what you see here is uh, with the 2,400 employees, uh, that was the status before we acquired within this year, uh, the Stoll company. Stoll is uh, acting on the knitting market and we, we take over Stoll uh, in March this year. And that was the reason we, we raised uh, the employee to over 3,000. Our product portfolio, so Karl Meyer is divided in five business units. That's work meeting with our colleagues in, uh, located in, in Frankfurt. Technical textiles is the business unit we are representing today here. Work preparation also in Frankfurt and installed, as I mentioned, to a company for Mid and Weir. And the last but not least, uh, KMO is a business unit uh, where we support our customers with uh, the digitalization and uh, you know uh, digitalization uh, is getting more and more attention and that was the reason we will provide with this business unit and support our customers. So application fields where we are acting on so as you can see automotive is one of the business uh, we are doing and the wind energy, also the advertising tarps, what you see here, that you, it's used and uh, for the road construction, um, medical equipment and, and special needs, sports, clothing, as you see here, aviation and, and aerospace also we have to mention and, and truck tarps. And last, uh, what you see here is the bridge building. Maybe one information to you, Karl Meyer is not producing the products, we are producing the machines to produce these products uh, that you can see here and uh, used in, in several and different uh, industries. So here's some information about our machines. What you can see here, for example, a weft insertion knitting machine on the left side and uh, we are producing uh, non-print and uh, non-woven fabrics. And on the right side, with the composite machine, uh, Max 5, for example, where we are producing also uh, scrims uh, and, and fabrics uh, with uh, yeah, glass or carbon uh, fibers. This is the electronic, for example. Uh, on the right side, you see here the uh, Products can be produced with these machines, yeah, like uh, mesh fabrics, as I mentioned, for example, used in road constructions or bridge building, mainly in the construction industry, but also in different industries used. Then on the left side, textile reinforced concrete, what you see is uh, used uh, in, in bridge building and, and also in the construction building. And on the right side, uh, continuous fiber reinforced thermoplastic, which is quite new on, on Karl Meyer, uh, where you see on the, on the bottom, uh, the fabric uh, very, with a very thin surface thermoplastic material, which is also used in automotive and in different industries. Yeah, that was a short uh, introduction about Karl Meyer. Thanks for your attention. and. Uh, we hope to have a uh, further discussion with you if you are interested in Karl Meyer uh, machines. You see the two contacts uh, if you have further questions, so you please don't hesitate to contact us and uh, we are happy if we have further discussion with you. Thank you. Yes, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. Um, so the, are there any questions? Just feel free to unmute your microphone. I see no questions and I um, 
maybe point out to the um, chat, you find the two links for some YouTube videos. You can um, um, yeah, look at them later, maybe yet also, but I think you um, should more and look to the I next presentation. Also. Yeah, and then yeah. also has a question. I see it in the chat. After the videos that you can uh, download and see from uh, Karl Meyer, Bena asked that she would like to ask a question. Please okay. unmute your mic. Okay. Bena, please unmute your mic. No, you don't manage. So write it in the chat. I'm sorry, we cannot hear no. you. So, is there still there's a question? Maybe you write the question in the chat and we will talk about it later then. Yeah? Okay. Okay, maybe I have one question um, while Bena writes the question in the chat. Um, <clears throat> you make the, the, the textile, do you also make some um, products or do you concentrate really on the semi-finished products like um, you know, woven or non-woven fabrics or things like this? The concentration is on, on the machine, on the, on the production equipment, uh, yeah. exactly the, the, the tapes or something like that. Uh, we are producing the machines. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah, I think we, if, if there are further questions, we will um, have later also time in the questionnaire round. Um, so, then we will go on to the uh, next presentation from Emma Dieterle. Um, yeah, also um, a company out of the south of Germany. And I think quite new in the field of um, carbon fiber machines, but I think they have a really interesting solution. And yeah, Bettina Schrick, um, feel free to um, start your presentation. Thank you, Tiar, <laughs> for the introduction. Let me share my screen. Do you see my screen now? Yeah, we see it. Perfect. Okay, so the title of my presentation is Easy Access to Automated Composites Manufacturing, because we want to help more people to start out in automated composite production because for changing parts in many sectors such as the sports industry it's still the case that uh, people use manual layups manual production processes and we want to change this in order to get more people started into this field uh, who we are, um, this is our, our building. We are located, as Tiag said, in the south of Germany. And for the past 50, 60 years, our main business has been in metal working, in machine development, such as here on the left side, we've developed a huge screen that's located in Dresden, um, which we weld. We also, also produce machines for technical processing fabrics out of thermoplastic filaments. And since 2013, we started uh, to uh, focus heavily on uh, carbon and also fiber processing machinery. Um, so we are sort of a startup company within, within uh, yeah, established SME uh, company uh, with the structures of such things. So we offer modular machines that are flexible and simple in operation, also consulting. And our mindset is that we use open innovation by sharing and exchanging and cooperating a lot with institutes startup companies and also the corporate world. Here you see our lab where we have several machines for also material production and testing. And we focus on fiber spreading, fiber impregnation, 
also the placement of fibers in preforming. So you are all invited to come by and uh, work with us and, and, and test some equipment. Um, so what we've developed is in the course of the last six years is um, flexible modules that you can easily combine as your task needs it. So the first step is always to unwind your fibers. Then you want to spread and maybe impregnate your fibers. You need some heating and cooling and rewinding. And you can choose these modules depending on what you need and make a combination. And later on, if you need a new task, add new modules and uh, therefore have a tailored solution to your task. So one possible process is to use a fiber spool to spread it and combine it with powder to obtain a dry fabric tape, which you then can use in, in, in fiber placement processes later on. And here you see the machine and we keep it simple and only use one roving at a time to, to, to process. Uh, which has the benefit that you can easily switch materials and test many combinations of fibers and uh, uh, powders, for example. So here you see our UD fixed toe line. Uh, you can vary the aerial weight and powder content and also the powder type. So you can get uh, tapes with various widths if you need it and also the steering and process control is, is, is kept very simple so that everyone can easily learn to use it. Another <clears throat> application is the automated fiber placement for preforming. Here you see the tape that we produced with the other machine. You can lay, lay down with, with this laying head. Um, also, this is integrated, uh, sorry, this is integrated in this machine and you can easily change the head to either use dry fiber placement or wet pre prep fiber placement. Um, this machine is also very flexible and tuned for ease of use so that um, you can uh, lay your fibers in any direction and the overall process is again frugal. You have low cutoff waste and uh, have the possibility to have many adjustments for flexible and changing parts. So here you see a whole process chain where you first have material production, then you use the automated placement to have a tailored preform, for example, for skateboard manufacturing. You can combine this then later on to, um, with, with tailored fiber placement and stitching to have inserts here where you want to drill holes in a skateboard, for example. And then you use resin infiltration to, to, uh, to finalize your part. So we offer the whole value chain, but also you can just uh, select one of the machines and we've provide the material so you can get started. And um, the addressable markets are, of course, wherever you need or want to get started in automation and need flexible processes for individualized um, uh, products, such as in the sports industry, maybe for medtech, such as the orthopedic industry, also for education, because many companies and also universities are just starting out to teach uh, automated production in composites. Also in mobility, such as um, rotors, for example, in air taxis, and also in the construction industry. And overall, we offer the flexibility um, the machines have a relatively low investment cost. You don't generate much waste and have the possibility for 
lots of flexibility and reliability and also the machines you can learn easily. I mean, you don't have to have a PhD in order to um, run the machines. Even uh, workers can, can learn to operate the machinery within a day or two. And yeah, with that, we also validate our, our processes together with institutes to, to show that even simplified machinery doesn't, uh, you, you don't have to compromise in, in, in quality. So with that, I like to conclude and want to thank you for your attention. And we're looking forward to cooperate in, in, in projects and get you started in, in automated composite production. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you, Bettina. Are there any questions? Just, okay, Oleg, please unmute your microphone. Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, basically, boy, based on the pictures, you are ma mainly oriented on the R&D equipment for fiber production, or it's uh, more industrial? Uh, well, you can sc scale, scale it up. You can also produce. It depends if you want to have large series production or if you want to have project production for changing parts. I mean, uh, the machines have an output of 25 meters a minute, and uh, you can, of course, generate uh, enough material for uh, uh, a small to medium series production. If you, of course, are looking for large series production, then you should talk to Karl Mayer, because they are uh, more experienced in that field. I mean, we are not equipment supplier for, for certainly large series production. Uh, we are more for the prototyping, small series, medium series production. Additional small question. Uh, did, you, uh, 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 in the, uh, did you have experience with filaments, carbon fi uh, uh, filaments, not tapes? Because I saw I saw the, uh, on your presentation now that it's more tape oriented, or it's uh, did you uh, also made some filaments? What do you mean by filaments? Do you mean uh, uh, thermoplastic filaments? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we have some experience with thermoplastic filaments, but not in terms of um, tape placement, because usually you would have lasers uh, in place in order to provide enough energy to these tapes mm -hmm. to to have uh, to lay them down but for uh, powdered tapes with thermoplastic powders we have experience in that and um, we can also place them but they are not fully fully consolidated okay thank you okay. thank you you're welcome okay is there any more questions Okay, if, if not, thank you again, Bettina, for, for the presentation. And then we will come to the next company. Now we have seen some companies uh, or many companies who, who look for the uh, production of parts in the end. And um, the uh, next company will um, yeah, show us some technology for testing um, components. And yeah, I'm looking for the presentation from uh, RTE. Yeah, good morning, everybody. You should see my screen already. Yeah, perfect. Right? Perfect. Yes, you mentioned it. Uh, we heard a lot of fiber and uh, uh, fiber processing. And uh, now we will address in the end uh, the, the, the components, what you will make from these fibers and tapes. Um, and they have to be tested in the end if uh, the results are good or not. And this is what we are offering. Sorry. Ah, that way. Okay, uh, some words to RTE, Acoustic and Testing uh, Company. We are a spin out from the Fraunhofer Institute. Uh, we started 1986. Uh, from the beginning, we addressed uh, the hardware and software development to be able to processing big data, especially big data, what you have uh, with acoustic 
uh, testing in the acoustic field. This is where we had our focus on from the beginning. We are um, a small engineering office with 15 experts, but we have a lot of expertise uh, which we build up over the years. Um, our business is a project business, means customers comes to us with a, a problem, a testing problem, and we will design, develop for them the right solution. We do our business worldwide, so our machines and solutions you, you will find everywhere in the world. Um, in which field are we um, have our expertise um, and are where we are active? Uh, for sure, it's the automotive industry, because the automotive industry is the biggest industry. If you look for serial production, where you have safety re relevant parts, which needs to be tested, 100% tested before they will be added to, to a car. Um, the new field is uh, electromobility in any kind of. We, uh, we do a lot of testing technologies for the medical uh, sector and the aerospace industry. Um, excellent um, products are casting or powder metal um, components because they have a very nice sound, which we can test, I'll tell you later. For sure, we also address the field of hybrids and composite materials. Um, here is still some uh, testing needed, some new testing application needed, uh, which has to be, to be developed. Uh, and for sure, ceramics, plastics, and so on, everywhere you need our acoustic testing. So what are we doing? It's very simple, we listen. We listen to sound, we listen to noise, and then we can compare if something has a good sound, a bad sound, and is good or not good. So means sound is also means quality. Acoustic testing is comparing anomalies and sound. And sound above all is a noise, a sound, a tone, a bang. And this is what we hear, what we as a human being can hear and what we as a human being can evaluate if the sound is good or not, if you like the sound or if it's disturbing us. We divide the structure bone noise, which, is, which are oscillations or vibrations in a body. And if these uh, vibrations are uh, emitted by the body, then we talk about the airborne sound. I have a little example for you. You can hear very clearly the difference, and this is a subjective testing. We can hear something is bad or not bad. So, but in, in Syria, um, for the serial production, you need a subjective testing, and this is what we offer. All our solutions are based on our own testing system, what we are developing. So this is a software solution. It is a, a powerful system, which is not recording noises, analyzing noises, it is also able to evaluate the noises because in the end you want to evaluate if something is good or not good. Acoustic testing technology is mainly divided in three different fields which we are offering. We have the sound test, what you could hear in the, in the little video. Here you stimulate a, a body in its vibration and you can record the difference of the vibrations. It is calling a sound test. You do it if you check glass or porcelain or something, uh, you do it and the human being just know how to do it. Uh, another field is uh, where a component or a product make a noise in its function. Typical uh, products are here, the, the electrical drives, the gears, uh, air conditioning systems in cars, electrical uh, adjusters in the cars, all they make a noise or a vibration in its function and this you can uh, measure and evaluate if it's good or not. And the same is for the process monitoring. Processes uh, also emitted uh, vibrations and noises and you can monitor these noises and can decide if the process is still good or not, or if you're close to a, a maintenance sequence. So what we need, we need sensors. 
there are different kinds of sensors we are, can work with. It is not only acoustic testing what we offer and do. We, we do any kind of measurement where you use sensors. It could be electricity, it could be speed, it could be uh, temperature. So any kind of measurements what you need, we can combine with the acoustic signals and evaluate the, the products and the processes. One of our top projects to give you just an idea where you find these kind of testing technologies are the electronic braking system from Continental. Uh, it is a 100% safety relevant module. It is very difficult uh, to set up here a testing system. We, we use more than 100 uh, testing characteristics to decide uh, if the product is uh, manufactured right or not. Um, we are controlling four testing stations parallel and we are not doing only the NVH testing, what means acoustic testing. We also do all the electrical testing. These um, manufacturing systems or production lines you find in Germany, China and Mexico, all, they're all equipped with our testing technology. Uh, a little outlook um, for testing technology, um, and also this will address the processes for lightweight material and composite materials. In the end, uh, you want to measure all physical data, you want to make correlations uh, between each other, and it is offered for a continuous improvement of your processes. You have to use these data, what you are collecting and what you are evaluating to reflect them back into the production to see how you can uh, improve your production and how you can avoid any uh, mistakes or failures. Um, a future step here is very uh, important. We all have heard it already. We want to have self-controlled machines. We want to use the machine learning so that not a human being is necessary anymore to go through the evaluation of the data and give it back to the machine for some adjustment that the machine should be able to do it themselves. Our motivation for this business dialogue is that uh, we are looking for cooperation partners. Um, we see there is a lot of business um, possibilities out there which can be maybe developed together. Um, we see there is a lot of new testing requirements for lightweight components, what we can offer, what we can maybe develop together. Uh, we have a, a big program for the next 12 to 15 months for uh, developing artificial methods. Maybe we can find some partners here. And for sure, any kind of new hardware or software processing is interesting so, uh, for our future developments. So, yeah, I'm at the end. Future is created by us, by us all. Let's take a step forward. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, interesting discussions uh, during the next days. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Jörg. Um, are there any questions? I'll just look into the chat. Okay, not, not in the chat. If you have a question, just unmute your microphone. All right. Yeah, I would, I would have uh, one question. Yeah, please. <laughs> and uh, Steve, uh, have you test uh, your test methods on thermoplastic materials already? Yes, we also do this on thermoplastic materials. Okay, and with success, I guess. <laughs> Um, success uh, is not granted. Uh, we all always have to do something like a sampling, a feasibility study first, mm -hmm. because uh, we have to check the, the influences, what we can have from the process itself, from the component mm -hmm. itself. The more complex the component is, uh, the more difficult the testing is. Mm -hmm. So something maybe we have to discuss or should discuss it on the product. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Okay, <clears throat> are there any more questions? If not, I, I have one question. Um, is it possible to use your acoustic testing method in a production process? So, you, of course, you can um, uh, test the machine, but also can you test the, um, the product that produced during the production process? 
I just asked because normally a production machine is quite loud. So it's still possible to, to make such a test? Yeah, this is still possible. Uh, and this is a typical question what we always get that uh, how the noises uh, from the machines or the production hall is influencing the, the acoustic testing when it is integrated in the production line. Um, but we know how to cope with it. It depends which kind of acoustic testing uh, you, are, you are looking for. The acoustic material testing has no problems with it because microphone is very close to the product so that we don't record the disturbances uh, which are in the near field. If you go for noise and uh, noise testing, it's a little bit different. Here you have a, a longer measurement period and you get more problems due to the uh, environment sound, but you this you can uh, avoid by using a, um, um, a noise protection uh, cabinet or something like this. Okay. Yeah, um, thanks again for the presentation. So Very then right. we will come to the um, last um, company presentation for today. Um, this will be uh, Text Techno and um, Stefan Fischer will, will present the company. Yes. Hello, everybody, and guten Tag. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, hello. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll start sharing my screen, and now you can see it. So thank you for hanging around and staying with the uh, company presentations to the, the last, hopefully not the least, <laughs> presentation. I was actually, uh, so my name is Stefan Fliescher. I was actually supposed to be here together with Markus Hadelov today. Uh, but uh, uh, he has a sad case in the family, so I'm alone, but we will manage to get through the presentation, no problem. Um, what I would like to tell you today is, um, or to show you our solutions in composite testing technology. So we're the second company in the field of today's companies who's doing testing, but you will see we're not testing the final composite, but we're earlier on in the value chain, really taking care of some of the intermediates. And you will see there are certain aspects that need to be tested and there are gaps. And we're trying to fill these gaps along the value chain. So uh, our expertise in testing is really coming from um, testing fibers and yarns from man-made fibers, actually. And we've been doing this for synthetic yarns and fibers for the past 70 years or so. And uh, in the last 15 years, we've been concentrating also on composite testing, applying our knowledge of how to really handle fibers and yarn also the field to the field of composite. Um, we're manufacturing all the devices uh, here in München Gladbach. Uh, we've got about uh, 85 employees overall, and we cut the metal, we solder the electronics, and we also do program the software, giving us a very high production depth. And I think this makes us a very interesting partner to also come up with new ideas. So we uh, have new devices every now and then. And I've brought with me um, four uh, testing laboratory equipment devices that I would like to show to you. And these are probably the most interesting ones also for Israel, but also for any uh, composite manufacturer. And the first one I'd like to show is this Favima Plus. And this is a single fiber testing machine. And we call it the ultimate single fiber testing machine. You can see we're pretty fond of this machine. And what it does is you put in a single reinforcement fibers. In this case, can be glass or carbon fiber. Carbon fiber, it can be any fiber really, also aramide, or we've seen the Dyneema uh, in one of the earlier presentations. And this machine will very rapidly tell you about the breaking strength and the stress and the tenacity of that fiber. So you want to know the modulus and the tenacity of your, uh, of your glass fiber. Within a couple of minutes, you got the answer. Instead of going to the otherwise very prone lamin uh, lamination process where you have to do the dog bond sample to go to your big tech tensile testing machine. So I think this is a very clean and very rapid measure to really get the tensile properties of fibers. Uh, it's both a perfect tool for R&D, as you might guess, but we also see that machine in quality control with automation where a, a robot feeding system is feeding in the fibers by hand. And we have early on uh, the question to uh, Oram Harabam about the uh, recycling business. And this machine is very good for if you want to test um, recycled carbon fibers. As you know, if they go through pyrolysis, they might degrade a little bit. And this can be nicely checked with this machine. 
the Favimat also plays a vital role in our FEMA test system. Now, this is a test system for measuring the fiber matrix adhesion through by means of a single fiber pullout test. And this is a technique that we've developed in the years 2015, 2016, together with the IPF in Dresden. And you see Christina Scheffler, she's also in the audience. And I think they have a presentation tomorrow. So this was a very good example where we took a lab setup that was placed at the university and put it into a commercial machine. And this has been pretty uh, um, viral back uh, for the last four years, let's say. And what we really do is we take a fiber, I've brought with me this example of a carbon fiber here and stick it, but it can be glass fiber as well, and stick it into a droplet. In this case, it's a thermal plastic, it can also be thermal set or we've had the concrete in the back, so we can also do uh, fiber placement into concretes here. And we take this sample and put it into our Favima testing machine and pull it out and hence get a very clean and direct measure of how well the fiber really adheres to the surrounding matrix. And this is, of course, one of the key properties that finally guides the quality of your final composite. The samples are being generated here on the left-hand side device in this FEMA bond. And I would just like to show you a novelty that we've introduced this year inside the FEMA bond. FEMA bond. There are a few camera systems acting there, and there's now one additional camera which skims over the surface of the droplet and looks at the contact angle, as you see here on the right in video, that is forming between the fiber and the, the matrix. So we see this meniscus and measure the contact angle, which is, of course, one uh, um, important measure for the wet out and the impregnation between fibers and matrix that you will see. Uh, during your process. Now, we've seen about uh, fiber um, technology, but we also have machines who take care of other intermediate products, such as the roving. Here on the left-hand side, you see a carbon fiber roving, but it, of course, can also be a glass fiber roving fed through our roving test device. And this is a measurement machine for testing the processing performance of rovings. And we measure various aspects who are all important if you really would like to know if your um, continuous fibers will really be feeding nicely through your production machine. We have many customers who are facing the problem that, for instance, with variation of ambient condi conditions, suddenly there's a huge mess happening because there's so much fuss. Uh, being created in the, in the machine. And this can be tested beforehand with this, uh, for instance, an incoming good control with this roving test device. Also, we are able to spread out the device, uh, the, the uh, fibers very um, flexibly here with our spreading unit and can see how much uh, with two camera systems, how much gain and with there is how many gaps and what is the regularity after spreading. So it's really taking care of the production side of life of composite at the stage where you have to handle rowings. Now, that being said, um, uh, that is a relatively complex device. I've brought with me a little easier example here uh, at last. And this is uh, our text reel. And you might say, wow, it's only a rep reel. That's, that's something we're used to for a long time. That's true, but this is really the first rep reel optimized for reinforcement fibers. And you can tell that uh, once in a while, it's the small things that you need in a textile laboratory. Uh, to help you out. So what you can do here, uh, you need this for testing the linear density according to ISO 1889. And to do this on reinforcement fibers, it's ideal to strip them off tangentially from the bobbin. So you need a machine here with high torque and low acceleration uh, to be really able to perform this nicely on reinforcement fibers. And you know, text uh, wrap reels are often the most dangerous device in your laboratory. But here we are taking care of highest work safety and also convenience to use. So that's really a, a small machine, but still valuable if you run, to do, run an everyday production, starting off with rovings from glass and carbon fiber toes. So that's uh, the machines I presented to you today. I have a little bit more to talk about. There's a laboratory mixer and a drapeability tester for fabrics and non-crimp fabrics. But I propose that we take that offline uh, in some of the meetings afterwards. So I would like to thank you for staying with me and I hope we get into talk maybe this afternoon, tomorrow or the rest of the week. Please feel free to contact uh, me and it would be great to hear from you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Are there direct any questions to Stefan? So then unmute your microphone and feel free. 
if not i have one question um you you talk about the rowings um so i expect there um that's rowings for um thermoset systems um do you also can handle um tapes with thermoplastic metrics um, on the rowing test right now, uh, this is of course for rowings, which are meant for both processes, thermos, thermoset and thermoplastics. Right now, the device is not meant for measuring tapes, but we are actually also working on a, a tape measurement version of that device. So stay tuned. This is more for the dry fibers here. Okay, perfect. So if there are not any more questions. I want to, to, to thank again all uh, companies for the pre presentation for today. Tomorrow we will see some more companies and um, yeah, now I think I will hand over again to Thomas or shall I also make the um, Q&A? No, it's fine. Thank you very much, uh, Tiark, and thank you very much our first six speakers and uh, obviously to our audience. It is. Um, it was a pleasure to listen to you. In, just a second. Sorry. Simon from Raphael had a question. Yes, sure, Shula. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Jack, will you take it over? Um, um, yeah, we have, we have one one question here. Are you Eli? Hmm? Are your tests yeah, are standardized? The, the questions, though, uh, uh, Bina. Um, uh, oh, so there's one private question. I, I guess we will answer them private. The private question I will answer privately. But there is a, a, a question by Eli, and he or uh, the question is: Are your tests are standardized? Yes. So the single fiber testing methods. There's an ISO 11566 for single fiber testing on carbon fibers. That is a standardized one. Um, the fiber matrix adhesion testing is not yet a standardized test, but uh, we're currently working on a standard that's going to come up on the time scale of a year and two and a half, where we have the proposal for the ISO. There is an upcoming standard that is going to be published in 2021 for the drapeability testing. So we're tr pretty much trying to support any of our machines also introducing a standard. So for half of them, there's a standard. For the other half, we're still working on it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Stefan. Um, yes, I, I, even for Eli, that was uh, the, the perfect answer. I wanted to remember uh, the Israeli guys in this uh, group here. Again, if you are interested to get deeper in details with uh, single companies, just uh, write to Shula and the organization organizer team to fix other meetings and obviously about the presentations uh, after after our event you will get forwarded the presentations of german companies so you can uh, repeat and uh, see again the the some of the the aspects are there any other things uh, you want to know you want to address to our speakers even the institutional ones or should we close in time? I think this is uh, the was a rhetorical question at mm -hmm. this point. Tomorrow we have a part two of our presentations. We have another six um, amazing companies that are a little bit um, in a different direction. I think that is um, very interesting for you too. We have. Um, and other speakers from the associations and there will be in the end of the the session there will be a, a technical visit a virtual visit at uh, an israeli company at massivit you can find that in the program of our delegation catalog the brochure uh, you you can find the link in the in the chat in this thank point you. thank you very much to all our companies Tiark for the our chairman for the moderation, very smart, and to our speakers, Werner from the um, ministry, um, Damaso and Oren from the association. Thank you very much, Shula, for your moderation, and I am looking forward to see you again tomorrow have a great day take care and have a good uh, good individual meetings today thank you bye bye
Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. What? אז כפי שאמרתי